Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Alright, I know today is Mayweather, Berto uh, Day, you know, announcement, oh, that was the other day, but press conference today, all that hoopla, a lot of shit being talked. I don't, I don't I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit on it, um, but not, I don't want to talk about it right now. You know, maybe later on, even though I, I kind of have another video I want to do later. I, I don't know, guys, we'll have to see. Um, I know... I'll put something out on it, you know, just, I just don't feel like talking about it right now, just put it out, it doesn't really interest me, um, but what does interest me is this Kovalev beater beef shit, man, I want this fight, right, but I'm not gonna let that, my desire for this fight get in the way of how I think, you know, towards what's happening here, um, if you don't know, you know, I, I got shit on this going way back. Um, you know, if you want more on this situation, like if you want to know the whole story, you could d do your own research, or if you want to, you know, or um, I did a lot of it for you. Um, you can basically just go to like my home page, uh, home YouTube channel thing, and hit that little uh, magnifying glass and type in Koval of Beater Beef. You'll get a few videos, and the titles, you'll know what it's all about. Um, I got the one from a couple months back where Kovalev, uh, where Beater Beef, actually first, Beater Beef let off some shots at Kovalev, and Kovalev responded. Um, so they went back and forth. There's real bad blood there. They really do not like each other, um, like, at all. Uh, then recently, you know what, last, last week or two, I'm sorry, I'm too fucking hot as shit. I just got out of a hot shower, I'm sorry. Um... Two weeks ago or something like that. Last week, when you know, whenever the the, the Muhammad Kovalev fight ended, um, Kathy Duval was talking about Ward, uh, Beater Beef, Stevenson. You know, they basically made offers to all of them. Um, I don't know if they made an offer to Ward. I just know they were talking to Rock Nation seriously, from what she was saying. You know, um, don't know where that's gonna go, but. 50-50 to Stevenson in Canada, he won't do it unless they let networks bid on it, which basically means Al Heyman wins and Kovalev got to break his contract with HBO. So we can't get that fight because Stevenson won't just take the offer that's on the table, you know, the one that they can do. And HBO, even a pay-per-view, 50-50 um, in his backyard, think it's a pretty fucking fair offer. Um, I never heard any fighter say we have to let the networks bid on us. I, I don't think I've ever, I don't recall that ever happening. Especially when one guy's locked in to a network and one guy isn't. I mean, I really don't think I've ever heard that before. You know, let me know if you have. Um, I look at it as just another way to avoid the fucking fight. Um... <clears throat> And even if they went, in, even if Kovalev and went into that purse bid, that would have made they would have still had to break that contract because Heyman would have put up so much money with whatever promoter he wanted to use. They would have won. They wouldn't have done a co-promotion. They would have let it all and put it on, you know, like Showtime pay per view or you know PBS wherever PBC wherever they wanted, not on HBO. Thus Kovalev breaking his contract and being sued. So it couldn't happen. Uh... But Stevenson can easily make quadruple his biggest, you know, his career high payday. He would this fight would dwarf his career high payday. Um, he has a chance to unify all the titles. I mean, come on, and it's 50-50 when he don't deserve 50-50, and in his backyard. Like I don't know. I, there's no other way I can see it other than the dude just don't want to fight Kovalev at all. Um, but Beater Beave, okay, he's the guy that I was like, all right, you know. I would have liked to have seen him have a few more fights, but going back, he was talking big shit. So what I'm basically asking here is, you know, is Beater Beef ducking Kovalev, avoiding Kovalev, or is his team being smart and doing the right thing? Um, we'll get, we'll talk about that, right? You know, they they sent a lot of shots at Kovalev, saying, "I beat you before, I'll beat you again, uh, anytime." You no, know, right now, fight me. Um, you know, make me a fair offer, and I'll fight you anytime, anywhere, any place. 
they made them an extremely fair offer. Same deal, 50-50 in your backyard. Uh, Russia, it's Kovalev's backyard too, but we all know that the Russian boxing community is behind Beater Beef more so than Kovalev. Um, you know, when they talked about their amateur fight, uh, Beater Beef won, says he won, Kovalev says that Beater Beef did win, and he got robbed. Um, because the Russian boxing community is behind Beater Beef. Uh, and I can believe that. I don't know, but I can surely believe it. I mean, it's possible, but we just don't know. We don't have the fight on tape. We don't know. So they need the fight, right? He says, hey, I'll take, you, you give me a fair offer, we'll get it on. Anywhere. Um, so, here, let's read this. All right, first of all, um, let, me, let me go here, right here. Uh, Earlier, uh, promoter Kathy Duva of Main Events expressed her disappointment in an email that was written to fellow promoter Yvonne Michelle. That's the, he manages, and, or he promotes, manages, to, uh, it's weird, um, promotes, you know, Stevenson and Beater Beef. Right? He takes a lot of them guys uh, from Canada, um, you know, Montreal area. Anyway, regarding Beater Beef's decision to take a pass on her offer for a November 28th showdown with IBF, WBO, WBA, and WBC Diamond Champion, just the Diamond Champion, he's not the world's Diamond, which is somehow better than, uh, it's weird, man, the WBC just won sanctioning fees from Kodo, or from Kovalev, and since Stevenson won't fight him, that's how they found a way to get sanctioning fees. Um, heavy, light heavyweight champion Sergey Kovalev in Moscow, Russia. They wanted to fight him in Moscow. Um, as reported, uh, Michelle's fighter was ordered to face B Hop in a final IBF eliminator. Um, it's still up in the air on whether or not Hopkins will actually accept this fight, but he has until Thursday. So that's, you know, come on now. Uh, it's coming right up next week. And Beater Beef's team have decided to have one more fight prior to facing Kovalev. 28-0, one draw, 25 knockouts. I think that's like 85 or 86% knockout ratio. Um, Duva was not pleased with the decision made by Beater Beef. 9-0, 9 KOs. Uh, and she detailed her feelings and position in a letter to Michelle. Um, I'll read the letter. Now, that's the thing. Beater Beef is on. He's being fast-tracked. We all know that, okay? He's, he's, he's fast-tracked. I have said, I said a long time ago, I said in pretty much every video I ever talk about this fight, that I think Beater Beef should fight a couple more guys before fighting Kovalev. Um... Now, Beater Beef is the one who talked all the shit. I mean, he said, I beat you before, I'll beat you again right now. Anytime, any place they offer him the fight, he don't take it. Okay? But, so that's like, what the fuck, right? But it is smart. Um, so it's kind of both, it's kind of, you know, both sides. You have to weigh it out. And I'll, I'm going to talk about that, you know. But, you know, he, he's saying one more fight. Uh, I think they're really hoping that Hopkins takes that fight. <sighs> I'm not too sure Hopkins will. Not that Hopkins is the type to avoid anyone or duck anyone. Um, <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know if, if he'll want that fight. The only thing is... He was saying he'll fight Triple G. Um, maybe he would fight Beater Beef. Beater Beef is a harder fight. Um, I, I'd say, you know, th what depends, because Kovalev would drop down and wait a lot, too, for Triple G. So it would kind of be about the same for him, no matter which way he goes. But Beater Beef is a tough cookie. Um, and Hopkins just isn't what he used to be, man. Like, a prime Hopkins, like, you know, the Tarver Hopkins, like right when he came up there, like super middleweight Hopkins, light heavyweight Hopkins, all that. Uh, prime, like the best version of him there, I think would have beat um, Beater Beef, or at least 
made it so close that it could have gone like either way. You know, that's a lot. Of, Bernard has a lot of them fights, right? Uh, this this cove or, or this Hopkins with Beater Beeb now. It'd be a great fight for Beater Beef. Put it that way, it would be. It would be a very good measuring stick, um, you know, to see where he's at, what he can do. Um, Kovalev beat Hopkins with intelligence, range, um, a jab, um, a lot of feints. Uh, keeping Hopkins thinking. You know, Kovalev fought his fight every second of every round and never had a lapse and that put Hopkins in a tough spot you know he was kinda hoping for Kovalev to get wild and make a mistake never happened I mean he's he's disciplined man he's very disciplined Beater Beef on the other hand will come in he'll come in more um, he will attack more and give B Hop more chances can, can can Hopkins capitalize on those chances like he would the one the, the ones he wasn't giving against Kovalev? I don't know. You know he was he's getting up there, man. I mean, he's sure not any younger from when he fought Kovalev. I mean, damn. And at this stage, at this age, he has to be uh, going downhill fast. Like, it's not slow anymore. Like, he's just uh, slowly on the decline. No, he's like doof, zooming downhill right now. So I'm, I'm not too sure if he should even take the fight. But, dude, he's just the type of guy that will. I mean, if the money is right, he'll do it. But I don't know, man. I'm really curious to see what Beop's going to do. Now, I think Beop is, if they're going to take one fight, before Kovalev, which kind of is bullshit because they talked all that shit. Um, you know, I don't have a problem with them building their guy up um, and going slow or fast. I don't care. You know, it's just whenever you start running your mouth saying, I'll fight you and beat you anytime you want it, then you offer it to them and they don't take it. Now you look like an asshole, right? Now you just look like an asshole. Um, because you said you could beat him anytime, anywhere, right now. So why not? And you said that before. You, I think I think that was before the Johnson fight, even. Uh, so why not fight him now? All right, why not? You're getting the offer right now. Um, I don't like that. I don't. Not at all. But I, I like I said, I always thought he should have a few more fights. You know, fight like. Uh, like a, a Fonfara, or you know, some or a Chalemba, fight both of them. You know, who cares? Fight you know both of them. Get his, get a couple good fights in, um, with them. You know, right outside the top tier type guys. Now Fonfara is kind of up there right now, so that'd be a good fight for him. Um, I mean, if he could destroy Fonfara or something, wow, he, that would be amazing. You know, he'd look really good. That would be really good for him. So, but that ain't gonna happen. Um, and the other thing is, what if he does fight Hopkins, like Hopkins takes it, he wins, and then Heyman says, and, and B2B starts getting all this hype, so Heyman says, hey, I'll fight Adonis Stevenson, and I'll pay you more. Okay, well, guess what, he's going to fight Stevenson now, and not Kovalev, and then what if Heyman starts just feeding him all them guys? And then, the again, it's just like... Uh, Kovalev Stevenson, but this time it's Kovalev Beater Beef, and we're just not getting the fight. However, Heyman doesn't have veto power of opponent over um, Beater Beef like he does Stevenson. So Beater Beef can fight whoever he wants. Uh, he's not he's not gonna fight Kovalev next. You know, he's gonna fight one more fight. Uh, which sucks. I got, you know, it's bullshit, because they said, give us a fair offer. We'll take it. They gave him a super fair offer, and then they don't take it. All right, and I'll, I'll give you their reasons. They're, they're kind of good reasons, I guess. You know, nothing against them, really, but here's what they said. <clears throat> Duva is saying this to Michelle and uh, Yvonne, Michelle, and Diva. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Beater Beaver. Um, you told the media 
that Peter Beef would take this fight if our offer was fair, which it clearly was. Sergey and I are quite disappointed that you have turned it down without even making a counter offer. Sergey was in a similar position in 2013 after he won an Eliminator to face B-Hop for the IBF title. He was offered a fight against Nathan Cleverly for the WBO championship immediately. Though a Hopkins fight would have been more lucrative, Sergey would have had to wait for months during which anything could happen. Without a moment's hesitation, Sergey chose, chose to take the immediate, guaranteed title shot in his opponent's backyard. Woo! That's, that's pretty rough. Uh, that's pretty rough, you know, because Sergey was literally in this exact same situation. And he did what all fighters should do. Actually, uh, there's the old adage in boxing that says, when you get a shot at a, a world championship, you take it. No matter what, you take it. Because you never know if you'll get it again. Period. Your very next fight, you can, yeah, might be the fight a lucky punch lands. Or a good punch lands and you're out of there. That's And you're out of there. And maybe it changes your career forever. And you never get it. You just don't know. That's why the adage is, if you ever get offered that title shot, you take it immediately. Um, Sergey did. Beater Beef don't want to. Uh, I mean, they were in the exact same position. You know, they went right for the title. Right for a title. Uh, and it was the right thing to do. It was, you know. Um, what if... You know, Kovalev fights just a, a stay busy guy over in Moscow. Then his next fight's like a ward or something. You know, or maybe they get Stevenson. Now Beater Beef's out in the cold for a little while. Uh, or what if like, a good punch lands on him? You never know. You never know. What if Beehop just beats him? I mean, honestly, it, it, we don't know when you can go have that, that shot uh, against Kovalev right now. Excuse me. There's not much difference in size. <coughs> Excuse me. Beater B is like an inch shorter or something, but he has like a, an inch reach advantage over him, over Kovalev. So they're, it kind of evens out. They're right around the same size. Um, so there's no real advantages there. They both have knockout power. Kovalev has bigger power. <coughs> um, the same nine guys that Beater B fought, he's 9-0 and with nine knockouts. Um, Kovalev would knock them guys out too. Uh, bad. You know, bad. He sure as shit wouldn't have went all those rounds with Johnson. Uh, I'll tell you that much. You know what I mean? Um, I think it was seven rounds. Seven, six... I think it was seven rounds uh, Beater Beef had with Johnson, who's basically just a sparring partner. He's tough. He's a little tricky, but he, you know, he, he's he's someone Beater Beef should have, you know, had out of there by six, man. I mean, I don't know. Beef, it, it was a good, it was a good performance by Beater Beef. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he still stopped. I mean, he did it in spectacular fashion. But I saw a lot of weaknesses in Beater Beef that night. Not a lot. I'm sorry. I don't mean a lot. I saw weaknesses um, that a top-level guy like Kovalev could exploit. He's open for the jab because uh, he, he doesn't have head movement. Um, his defense is his biggest nightmare. Um, he doesn't. His defense isn't all that great. He kind of just bam and eats the shots. You can't do that with Kovalev. You have to get out of the way of them. Um, he doesn't have uh, great uh, upper body movement, you know, um, and hit them angles. But his footwork does get him in position for angles um, to get on your side and attack, get over on this side attack. He's super strong. Um, like when someone goes, like if you ever saw. I think it was Golovkin Stevenson. Um, 
might have been Adama. It was one of them two. Uh, they tried to tie Golovkin up. They wrapped both of his arms under, so his arms were under their, uh, you know, armpits and elbows. And they're squeezing. I mean, he ripped out of that thing like a fucking panther. Um, like he was ten times as strong as the fighter, you know, just woof, ripped right out of it and then started beating the shit out of the dude. And, you know, Golovkin has videos on that, how to get out of a hole. Uh, Tra shout out to Tracy Starnes. He put me on to that. So you can go check those out. Um, you pretty you can't tie the guy up. I mean, you just can't. Uh, he's a fucking animal with it. Not only does he have a ton of techniques to get out, but he's so strong, he can just rip out if he has to. And he punches the shit out of you afterwards because he don't like being clinched. Um, Peter Beef is like the same way. You try to clinch him, he's ripping out and drilling you. Or if you tie one hand up, he's still ripping you with this next one, ripping this arm out, and coming right back. He's he's a monster, man. He's a monster. That these two need to fight. Um, let, let me let me keep going here, all right? Uh, but that first paragraph about how you know Sergey did it. Why can't you? Very true. Um, and you're gonna say, well, Sergey had more fights. Well, Peter Beef. Uh, Kovalev wasn't as technically sound yet. I mean, we still see him developing, you know, every single fight. And I don't mean, like, developing, like, learning the game. I mean, you know, developing style and technique and skills. Um, Beater Beef isn't really developing much like that, but he's just learning uh, the pro game more. And that's what happens in those first ten fights. Um... You know, if he had five more fights or something, he's not going to be much different in terms of skill and style um, and things like that. He's going to be the same guy. He's already at his, you know, peak. He's he's his best. He's as good as he can get, damn near, basically. You know, if he had a good, good, really good trainer like a John David Jackson or something, he would learn a little bit more. But with the team he has, they like what he does, how he does it, and that's what they, you know, try to perfect, what he already has. Um, Kovalev is still developing in other ways. And for that reason, I think Beater B should go after him now anyway, because Kovalev is going to keep getting better, man. Like, I mean, did you see in his last fight, it is, dude, it ended in three rounds, but after the first round, and he wasn't even doing much. But I'm like, yo, he is changing every fight. Like, staying the same guy, but just getting better. Learning new techniques, new skills. Uh, it, it was scary. You know, with that power, it is scary. Um, Peter Beef should probably jump on him now, man. You know, Kovalev's confidence is only shooting through the roof. Um, his skills, he's just getting better. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't see why they wouldn't take it, you know. Uh, you know, the perfect world, yeah, get them five more fights against those second tier, you know, from number five to number 15. Fight five of those guys, then go after someone in the top five, um, then Kovalev. But uh, that's probably not going to happen. You know, so one more fight ain't making a difference. It's not going to make a fucking difference. Um, that's the thing. If they said, no, we're not ready yet, we want a few more fights, I'd be like, all right. But they only want one. One fight ain't making a fucking difference. Um, if it's Bernard Hopkins, I can understand that because they would want that name on his resume. Um, it would build, uh, it would get B to be recognition. But if it's not Hopkins and it's just you know it's just a random like just a random light heavyweight, that's not gonna do anything. You know, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, a fight with Hopkins would give him big recognition. But if it's if it's not Hopkins, that one fight is useless, man. I mean, you're just gonna go in there and beat up on someone doing exactly what you always do. So that's why I don't see why the one fight is needed if it's not Hopkins. He shouldn't even be taking the one fight, to be honest, but because he has a shot to t grab three fucking titles in one fight. It's not one title, it's three. Um, and then you know he can get that Stevenson fight. 
So, right there, I mean, he should be going for it. Uh, and the offer they're giving him, I wouldn't give him the same offer in the next fight. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd say 50-50? You're out of your fucking mind, man. Now it's like 65-35. Even if he beat Hopkins. See what I'm saying? Just because I'd be like, you screwed us over, man. We were really thinking we were going to do that fight, and you backed the fuck out. <laughs> but he should take the fight. It's that simple. I mean, it's only, if he said a few fights, I'd understand. But he just wants one more. One more ain't doing nothing. You want, you, you know, start training right now. Put it that way. And then when you sign the contract, take a couple weeks off and jump right back in the gym. You, you'll be in tremendous shape. And do a lot of sparring in your, you know, right now. Um, you can have a little mini camp right now. It's the same thing as having a fight. Uh, you know, you'll get in the same shape as having a fight. Uh, I don't know. Man. I don't see the reason for it if it's not B Hop. If he can get B Hop, I can't blame him at all. I mean, that's Hopkins. You can make a name for yourself. You can try to be the first person to knock Bernard Hopkins out. Um, he can try that. No. And he'll get recognition. So I can understand that. But if it's someone else, like if it's like a, you know, a Chalemba or a, uh, you know, you know, you know, Funfara or something, then fuck that. Go for Kovalev. Because number one, one of them guys can beat you. Um, and then bam, title shots. Fucked. Fucked. You know, I mean, take it while you can. Take it while you can. All right. In the meantime, we will continue to make fights for Sergey against the best fighters who are actually willing to face him. As his star continues to rise, the terms I have offered to you for Beater Beef and Stevenson will not be open for long. Meaning, like I just said, that 50-50 in your... You can pick where the fight is, like in your backyard, that shit... Done. Done. You want to keep turning these fights down and stalling them out? Well, guess what? Kovalev's star is rising. Um, he's getting more valuable. No. We're not going to be offering these fucking 50-50 fights. And they're only offering them because they they need these guys. They need Andre Ward to fight him because they need big names for Sergey. They need Stevenson. That's why they're offering him crazy offer. They need Beater Beef. That's why they're offering him the craziest offer. I mean, this guy is, you know, he's a top 10 light heavyweight, but he's a fucking prospect, honestly. I mean, he still never fought a top second tier guy. You know, I know he fought uh, Campillo, and, uh, who was, uh, you know, a shell of himself. And, you know, Tavares Cloud, who was uh, not, 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 nothing impressive. Um... He had his moments, you know, a little flash in the pan type moments. Um, you know, that's basically about it. You know, he's recently beaten Jeff Page Jr. Um, he, he beat uh, Alex Alexander Johnson in his last fight. Um, I don't know, man. He's getting offered a title shot. Take it. Like I said, what if he has to go? F what if he don't get this title shot now and has to go fight four uh, top tier? You know, top second tier, like them top 10 guys, but not Kovalev or Stevenson, and he has to fight a few of them. Guess what? One of them might knock you the fuck out. I mean, who knows what Pascal will do to you? Who knows what Fonfara will do to you? Who knows what Chalemba will do to you? I mean, these are all guys, you know, he was supposed to fight Chalemba and pulled out of it. Last minute. Last minute. Uh, pulled out. And I always wondered why we never got an explanation. They just pulled out of it. Um, and I really wanted to see that fight. The kid they put in there with Chilemba, remember that night? Um, it was that fucking Russian duo, the father and the son, and the son did not want to be in that ring. He did not want it, man. Like, he just, remember he kept, he just sitting on a rope saying, come on, hit me. I don't care, you know. He was saying to his dad, I don't want to be here. Um, fuck you. You know, fuck you. Uh, I didn't want to take this fight, but he ended up probably being forced to take it. Um... And he pretty much quit after he knew he was in over his head with Chalemba. I mean, that fight was terrible, sad. I remember watching it with my family, like, what the fuck is this shit? Um, and even they were bitching, you know. Anyway, all right, this is Yvonne Michel, uh, his response to Duba. This is his letter. Um, Good evening, Kathy. 
first, I wish to thank you again for your offer regarding Beaterbeev and the opportunity to fight against Sergei Kovalev in Moscow on November 28th. I believe it was a move in the right direction, and you have made an honest offer considering the potential resources. I am confirming to you again the intention for Beater Beef to box against your champion in the very near future. See, first, it was anytime, anywhere, I'll beat your ass right now. And now all of a sudden it's, no, I still want to fight, you know, just in the very, uh, in the very near future. You know, going back on your words, man. And if they, like I said, if they said, hey, they just came out and were honest and were like, hey, we were jumping the gun. Uh, we apologize to the fans, to Kovalev, to the main events and do it for getting people's hopes up. Uh, but we decided to take a step back um, slow it down a notch and get a little more experience in our on our uh, with our guy first. Then we'll come for you. We want a few more fights before we fight. I'd be like, cool. At least you're being honest. I can respect that. But them saying all talking all that shit and then being like, we'll fight you, but we want one, one fight first. What's one fight? One fight ain't doing anything, man. It's not going to do much. Uh, the only thing it can do is, like, expose... I mean, you can get some... Ex if it's Hopkins... Okay, you know, like I said. But if Hopkins don't accept it... Uh, and Hopkins don't want to rematch with Kovalev. He's never said he did. Um, I don't think he does. I think he's scared this time he'll get knocked out. Because Kovalev is better now. Um, I think if Hopkins got in the ring with him, he would get knocked out now. Um, Kovalev was very cautious and scared there because that was his his life was riding on that fight man his life and the life of his wife and child now he's confident he'd go in there and you know he'd take more chances and I think he would break uh, Hopkins down especially because Hopkins is even older than he was then um, and like I said I think at this age you're on the fucking downhill downslide fast uh, after our meeting with Arthur Beaterbeef and his trainer today, we have decided it would be best for the moment to go into the direction offered yesterday by the IBF and have Arthur to fight for the IBF mandatory position. So, yo, you're trying to fight to be the mandatory, so you're the mandatory to Kovalev's IBF so you can fight him? Why do you want to work yourself into the mandatory position when you can just jump straight to the champ? You know, push that dude aside and bam, you got your title shot. Like, it don't make sense. I think there's a little fuckery going on here, man. I do. I think they're hoping to get Hopkins, beat him, and then they're going to go fight Adonis Stevenson instead. Um, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. So right after I send you this message, I will write to the IBF that we have accepted to fight for the title eliminatory against Bernard Hopkins. Please be sure this decision has nothing to do with our past relationship together. You have proposed to bury the hatchet and we have agreed to do that with you. We wish to continue an open dialogue because there are great fights between our boxers of two organizations to be made for the benefit of all involved. Once Beater Beef is having one more fight and becomes the mandatory, we would be open to do an immediate fight with the champion in early 2016. At the moment, we are convinced the potential revenues will be much more important than what you can get in November. <sighs> Look, they're saying we want one more fight because then the fight will be worth more money. Uh, Kathy just said, if you don't take the offer, you're not getting 50-50 next time. You know, so it, it, at best, it can be the same. 
At best, it can be the same. Um, it'll probably just be worse, you know, because 50-50 right now is fucking amazing. Now, next time, they're the champ. They can just be like, 65-35, bitch. 60-40, take it or leave it. No, 60-40, what? You know, we're getting 20% more than you. Now you just lost 10% of all revenues. Is the fight going to be any bigger? No. Um, if they put it on pay-per-view now, all the hardcore heads will buy it. If they put it on paper in November, after even if Beater B beats uh, Hopkins or something, who's going to buy it? Same amount of people. Same amount of people, right? Um, let's say, let's for the sake of argument, for the sake of argument, let's say it did a million, right? Uh, at 50-50, um, you know, right now. It won't, but let's just say it would. Uh, and they're getting 50-50, so, you know, half of that's his. Now, what in early 20, what if early 2016, it, 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 you know, it's still doing a million, but 10% is taken off of beat or beat shit, right? So, a whole 100,000 is gone. That goes, whoop, right over, right directly to Kovalev, right? Um, and then they go, we can split the rest. You know, why, why, why? You know, it's, I, I don't see any difference in the, the people who buy the fight. Look, they're not going to get more than, like, if they have 500,000 people buy it now. Um, I don't think that Beater B fighting any light heavyweight would make the next fight get more than a uh, 100,000 buys or 50,000 buys. Um, it wouldn't even get 50,000 more buys than if they just did it now. They, they, they won't, I'm telling you. And, uh, you know, even if they were able to get 50,000 more buys, guess what? Well, like I said, 10%, that's probably, you're probably not, you're probably not getting it. Um, they said this offer ain't going to be open for long, so they're not going to offer them 50-50 in 2016. It's going to be 60-40. So them little extra buys you wanted to get money from, guess what? Now you're not getting it. So it's still the same exact amount of money. You see what I'm saying? I, I don't, I find that is bullshit, man. And I know Kathy Duva does too, man. Um... Main time, we will still try to be creative and find a way with you to get Adonis Stevenson and other light heavyweights under our both control slash into the mix. I hope this message find you well. All the best, Yvonne. Uh, bullshit. Uh, bullshit. I call bullshit. Um, <clears throat> they don't want to fight. They don't want to fight. I don't think they thought Kovalev would offer them the fight. Dead serious. Um, I think they were thinking maybe Kovalev just didn't want the fight. Um, like maybe he was scared of Beater Beav or, or something like that. Or maybe they didn't want to risk it against a guy like Beater Beav when they can go milk, uh, milk this out for a while against mandatories from three different sanctioning bodies. Um, but they're not looking to do that. They're looking to fight only big names. Uh, the biggest names that can po they can possibly get that will actually fight them, that's who they want. I mean, if you got nuts and you're a big you're a big name fighter, if you'll get in the ring with them, that's who they'll fight. And they're giving out amazing offers, man. I will say this. Kathy Duva um, with Kovalev is the fucking nicest promoter I've ever seen. I've never seen a promoter. I mean, K2 does it a little bit with Triple G, um, with paying uh, fighters extra. They're like more than they 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 would normally have to pay a fighter. They pay them extra and give them little bonuses and things like that. But with, I mean, yo, they don't see K2 giving Monroe fifty fifty and shit like that. I mean, uh, if they can get a decent name fighter. For Kovalev, they're like 50-50. Do it, please. We need opponents. I mean, they make such great offers. Like, dude, we'll give you half. You're worth 20%. 
uh, but we'll give you half, and we'll fight in your backyard. So wherever your backyard is, that's where we'll fight. What, Moscow, fucking Philly, uh, Canada, well, where's your backyard? That's where we'll fight. That's crazy. When they're the A-side, I've I, I never seen like a, a promoter do this kind of thing. Um, if I was another promoter, I would love working with Kathy Dupa, just because it would be so easy to make a fucking fight. So easy. Uh, it wouldn't be anything like this Cotto Canelo bullshit that's going on right now, that's for sure. Um, that fight needs to be official really, really soon, man. I'm tired of hearing oh, a few more details and then rumors of it's going to fall apart. Um, but I don't think it'll fall apart. I just think it's, it's taking a little while. Now they know what Floyd's doing so they can work around that. I think we should get an announcement probably next week. I'm hoping. That's what I'm, I'm hearing and thinking. So we'll have to see about that. But this fight pisses me off. Pisses me off. Um, we'll find out by Thursday if Hopkins is willing to fight Beater Beef. Um, in my opinion, Hopkins should hang them up, but uh, he's still so good, it's you know none of my business to tell him that. Um, or fight somebody decent, like a tough, good opponent that you can get a win over and just retire, man. Go out on a win, hang him up. He is fucking paid. He, he saves his money, invests his money. He's good to go. Uh, go enjoy your family, B-Hop. That's what counts. It's not the the family counts, no boxing, man. Um, Beater Beef should just take the damn fight. In my opinion, he should take the fight. The hop, the hop, exposure he could get from Hopkins would be great, right? Um, then say he beats Kovalev too. Wow, he's he's a superstar then, you know. But he can just jump right in and beat Kovalev, and he's a superstar. Then they have a rematch, right? Boom! And oh my God! I mean that—that's big time shit right there. So I don't see why he wouldn't just go right for the superstar right now and the bigger star. I mean, who would do? Would you rather have a win over the guy you're supposed to destroy because he's fucking like 51 and aging fast, or you know the fucking prime should be Lenny Obit. You know, he's the recognized top dog at light heavyweight. Damn near undisputed. Uh, he, he can't even get the chance to be unified and all that and lineal. But, and that's bullshit. But it is what it is. I'd go for the three titles. You just gave me an offer to fight for three belts. And, I mean, and 50-50 in my neck of the woods? Oh, please, give me that contract. Uh, that sounds like they don't have belief in Beater Beef. Honestly, it sounds like they, you know, they, it, it, it's clearly what it is. They don't want to fight the guy. Um, they said they did. They got the offer. They backed out. Um, and I don't want, you know, you can't even say, well, after this fight, they're going to. After this fight, they don't have to. And they might not. Right? They might not. After this fight, they can be like, oh, no, we're going for Stevenson's title instead. And then he wins it. And then what happens? Do we get a unification fight? Probably not for a minute. Uh, maybe 2017. You know. They should just do it now. We need big fights, man. We need all these top guys fighting each other in any fucking division. I'm tired of dudes talking shit, too. Talking mad shit and then not getting the fight done. Like Amir Khan and Thurman, those guys better get a fucking fight made now. They're both talking shit. So they better fight a top dude. Um, you know, Kell Brook and Khan, I hear that might happen in uh, 2016. There's being talks with that. I hope so. Um, we hear Thurman is demanding from Heyman a top name opponent. Uh, that's That'd be good. You know, you know, uh, I'm liking that. So these top guys need to start fighting each other. And Peter B. and Kovalev, uh, no exemption. They need to fight now. One fight ain't doing shit, man. I can understand if he said three, four fights, but it's one. One. Oh, we want one so we can be the mandatory, then be mandated to fight you. Why go through all that trouble when you can just go fight for the fucking three titles right now? I don't know, man. That's how I feel. 
Uh, let me know how you feel, though. Thunder Dome Boxing Talk. Peace.